I hope the title of this um, video is what you got you to stop because I would love to know um, if, if some of you guys have that song in your head now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm really excited to do this video for you guys. I've got this topic that I want to share. Um, I'm sharing this out just for those of you who are catching on a replay, you're the ones seeing this first. So um, I always share these into a private group that I'm in um, for network marketers, um, especially for women, for women and entrepreneurs. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna share this into there while you guys are hopping on. Thank you guys so much. If you're catching this on replay, let me know. If you're watching this live, I'd love to know. Just say hi or something so I can see you. Facebook is being seriously weird the last couple of videos that I've done. Um, I haven't been able to see anybody who's watching. Like I can see the number up there, but I can't see who is watching unless they say something or unless they hit the share button and then say shared so it lets me know. So just let me know if you're catching this on live. I'd love to, um, I'd love to give you a shout out and say hello. So I was just on a team call. Um, every Monday I do a team Zoom to train um, my personal network marketing team and we got on this topic of customer care, customer service, retention, sales, all of these things. And um, anyway, so I thought I'd pop over here and kind of give you kind of a condensed version of it because this is a problem that I see happening a lot. Um, I get to talk to a lot of different network marketers, um, people who are in different businesses, um, even brick and mortar businesses, you guys go through the same things. What, no matter what you're in, um, involved in, you're going to experience things like this. Hey Betty, hey Bonnie. Um, and this is just one of those things that honestly, I feel like this is a topic that's not taught enough, especially in network marketing, direct sales. It is stuff that I had to learn the freaking hard way <laughs> uh, by making a lot of mistakes. And I think that it's a topic that everybody kind of skirts around, especially companies. I don't feel like companies do enough training on this topic of sales and customer service and like the whole vibe, like the attitude around it, um, retention, stuff like that. I think a lot of network, a lot of network marketing companies and direct sales companies make a huge freaking mistake of just saying, oh, just get people on the product and then they're never gonna wanna stop. And that is not always the case. That's not always the truth. Um, the same reason why some people buy a Mercedes Benz and even though it's a really great car, a really great product, some people, depending on the experience that they've had, they are like, when it's time to turn in my car, I'm going with another company, I'm going with another brand because I did not like my experience there, okay? It's not that Mercedes is a bad, brand or a bad company. It's just the simple fact that having a great product, having a great company is not the only thing. So if you're in network marketing, if you're in direct sales, you're going to want to share this out, especially because if you have people who follow you, who are friends with you on social media, and they're also in network marketing, they're also in direct sales, you need to hit the share button. Let me know though, so I can say, uh, say thank you to you because this is gonna be something that they need to hear too. Honestly, I feel like I need like a megaphone. Hello, everybody needs to hear this topic. So, um, and if you're singing the song in your mind, I know it's from the 70s. Um, I was just a baby, I was just a wee fetus. However, if you're singing that song, I would love to know also um, if you're so vain, if that popped up into your mind, if you're singing that to yourself. I, I did that on purpose, okay. So one of the things that I feel like I wanna train now, I'm gonna specifically, thank you Bonnie for sharing, I'm specifically talking to those of you who are in network marketing or direct sales, okay? So, but, but if you're in another industry, not in those where you can take little bits and pieces and learn some things, you will find this very helpful, all right? So one of the things that I feel like is a big problem in people's network marketing businesses, direct sales, is not just how to get a new customer or somebody to join your team, okay? We, we have like a gazillion trainings on that, on how to enroll, how to recruit, all of that. Like seriously, that's overdone, I think, by a lot of companies um, and a lot of trainers out there. What a lot of people don't talk about is retention and creating that kind of culture where people actually want to stay. Because if you're in network marketing especially, residual income literally relies on the fact that people are going to stick. <laughs> you need people to say yes and keep saying yes. Am I right? Like if, if you don't have that going on in your business, you're kind of screwed. Like it's just, it's like pouring water into a bucket but you have holes in your bucket. 
I've been in situations like that where sometimes it is the company who kind of sucks. Sometimes it's the product that I've seen some companies struggle with that it kind of sucks. Um, but if you've got a really great company and you've got a really great product and you are experiencing lack of retention, like if people are out just as fast as they're coming in and you feel like, Ugh, if you feel like you like always have to be chasing after people and you're never able to get ahead and like it goes up and then it slides back down. If you're feeling like you're always grinding and hustling and always working to recoup, right? What you had, um, this may be a problem. And so I want to help you with this. So the number one thing that I think of, and I mentioned this on another video, but the one thing I think that is a big problem right now is that, you know, you are hearing a lot from me too um, and other trainers out there, especially for social media trainers. You're hearing us say a lot about don't be spammy and weird on social media, right? Don't post your company name. Stop with the company graphics. That is literally so 2017. Like, stop it. If you're still doing that, wake up. <laughs> that doesn't work anymore. Um, so here's the thing. If you are in that phase though, what, that I've seen, and I've seen some of y'all's posts too, where some of you guys I think are so afraid of being spammy and weird on like and salesy on your Facebook or your social media that you don't do anything. So one of the ways, like when you're talking about customer service and growing your business and keeping people in and keeping people excited, you have got to show up bold, you've got to show up big, loud, bold, confident, consistently. That's the key word, consistently. Because just like if, if it, like say for example, if you're, if you drive by a restaurant, okay? If you drive by a restaurant and one day it's like pop in and they've got people all over the place and a line around the door and like all the lights are on and music is blaring and that, look, that place looks really awesome. And then like, I don't know, two weeks later you drive by and the lights are off, nobody's home, it's desolate, they've got newspapers like stacked up at the front door. And then you drive back by like a week or so later and it's like pop in and there's music and there's people and there's crowds and it looks awesome. But then two weeks, two days later you drive by and it's like desolate and it's nobody's there and the lights are off and nobody's home. What that tells you as a prospective customer, okay, is that, dude, are they even serious about their business? <laughs> If they like show up sometimes and don't show up next time and then they're gone for two years and now they're back and they're super loud and spamming and they've got like a sign spinner out front and they're like doing all that weird salesy stuff, what now they're back? Now they're back in my inbox because they want to recruit me or sell me on something? Uh, no, where were you for three years, right? Or if you never post about your product because you're scared of being spammy or salesy so you don't do anything at all? That's even worse, seriously. So the number one thing that I feel like is like a, like a foundation thing in terms of getting your customers to stick, getting people to stay excited once they're on your product or with your service is you have to keep showing up. Cause here's the thing, you know, you hear a lot, and especially for me, I preach this all day long and twice on Sundays, is that if you are going to court people and you're going to woo them into your business because they're a prospect and you're trying to get them to say yes and you're trying to convert them and all of those things, guess what? People don't like being treated like a number. They don't like feeling like you were just being nice to me and sending me like these love letters and clicking like on my Facebook posts and watching my lives and you... You were just trying to court me until I said yes. Because once I said yes, where are you now? You're not doing any of that stuff now. You're not even paying attention to me because now I've purchased and you don't need me anymore, right? Guess what, you guys? You feel that. Thank you for sharing, Carrie. You feel that when other people do that to you. Do you not? Have you ever gone somewhere and they were like super nice to you and VIP service and following up and oh, I just wanted to check in and see how you were doing and all of this kind of stuff. And then when you said yes and you became a customer, they're like nowhere to be found. Now they don't even send you a birthday message. They're not like, right? You have felt that before, probably. So how does that make you feel, number one, about that product in general or about that service? It kind of makes you feel like kind of icky, right? But imagine this, especially for those of y'all in network marketing, they have a choice. 
if they want your product and they like your product, newsflash, you're not the only promoter promoting your product. <laughs> All the other promoters in your company have the exact same website, the exact same catalog, the exact same everything, the promos, all that kind of stuff that you do. So why would they order it from you instead of just being like frustrated at your lack of customer service once they ordered? Why wouldn't they just take their business elsewhere to reorder? Why? What keeps them coming back to you? That's the key question and that is one of those things and you have to realize showing up consistently is what helps you get new sales. Showing up, being consistent, um, making it about them, sharing stories, sharing the benefits, not just the features of the product like non-GMO and probiotics. Nobody cares about that stuff. They care about how it's gonna make them feel, what's it gonna do. Um, they wanna see like the, the possible end result for them, like what's in it for them, right? That's how your posts have to come across on social media. I am telling you right now, if you watch this video, your business is gonna get better, right? Like I'm telling you straight up what you're gonna get. When you watch this video, when you share this with your team, like your business is going to get better. That is going to be the end result. Now, am I gonna come to your house and like force you to have perfect customer service, you know, for all your people? No but I'm teaching you something that will absolutely help your business. So like what I wrote up above the, the video is I'm telling you straight up, <laughs> this is gonna help you grow your business. It's gonna make your business even better. So you have to show up, you have to show up bold though. And I think that's a big problem that I'm seeing like overall in the whole social media space is there are way too many trainers and gurus who are teaching you like, ooh, don't be spammy. Don't say this buzzword. Don't mess up this algorithm. Don't do this and have to do that. And, Look, look, some people are trying to sell you a course and trying to sell you a book and trying to sell you their training by scaring the crap out of you, telling you all the things that you're doing wrong and all the things that you shouldn't be doing and all of these things. And so, number one, you could learn how to do it better, but in the meantime, you're probably so freaked out about making the wrong move or saying the wrong thing or posting the wrong picture or whatever that you're literally like, lights are off. You're not even posting about your product. You're not even posting about your business. You haven't figured out yet the, the in-between of being bold and excited and confident about your business and about your product without being spammy, salesy weirdo. Right, there is a middle ground, there is. You have to experiment and figure that out. Watch some of my previous videos, I'm all about that life. You don't have to like blast your company name out all over the place, you don't have to do all that kind of stuff and be so weird that nobody ever wants to see your posts again. You can get it to the point where even if somebody isn't like buying from you, they still support your business. That's the sweet spot, is when you get the like, at a girl or way to go guy or all those kind of comments or messages, even from people who aren't buying from you. That's how you know you've hit the sweet spot, okay? And that's what I kind of want you to hit um, when you watch videos like this. So showing up confidently does not mean super spammy and like just verbally vomiting all over the place online, okay? That is not what confidence is. Confidence is setting the expectation for having a really great experience. Like you know what your product or your service does for people, right? Hopefully you hopefully are using your product or on the service and your experience in life or your health or your physical fitness or whatever your service or your company does, whatever your product does, hopefully you are having some personal results with your own product. Can you be successful with your business if you're not personally on the product? Yes, you can, but you need to be really good at it. You need to be kind of an influencer. You need to be somebody that's built up a lot of trust. Just saying, that's a, that's a little, little asterisk disclaimer there, okay? You really, it's hard to do that, but can you do it? Sure. It's a heck of a lot easier though, you guys, if you're showing up super excited and be like, I love my product and this is amazing, I have so much energy and all this kind of stuff. You have to be showing up with that level of confidence because you are the thermostat for your business. You are. People will look at you before they buy to determine if they wanna do business with not only you, your company, take your product, be a part of your tribe, all that kind of thing. They're watching you before they even message you, before they even express interest to you, they're watching you. And newsflash, this is where a lot of people screw it up. Once you get to a certain level, once you get that person to say yes and they've purchased, guess what? The courting doesn't stop there. It's kind of like 
you know, you, you show up and you do it all big, right? When you're dating, but when you get married, it's like now it's sweatpants and no makeup and a messy bun. I mean, that's okay sometimes, but y'all, hello, you have to keep showing up. <laughs> you have to keep putting your best foot forward because even when somebody says yes, you guys, your customers, your team members, once they say yes, they've spent money on your business now. They've invested into you. They're gonna watch you even more. They wanna see, are you consistent? Were you just promoting that just to make a quick buck? Or are you really doing the thing? Like, how are you showing up? Did you get a few customers, earn a bonus, and then disappear? Now you don't even post about your products or your business anymore? Or are you still doing the thing every day? And if you have a team, if you're in network marketing, are you showing them how to promote? Are you telling them how to promote? Or are you showing them? Are you actually doing what you say to do on your page? I don't care if you, if you have one team member. That is now a responsibility. They're watching you. They also want to see if you're a person of your word. Do you just preach from the podium, but you actually don't do the thing that you're teaching? Y'all, you have to show up consistently and you have to be doing the thing. Now, the... The title of my video is You're So Vain, I Bet You Think This Live Is About You, okay? Let me explain. <clears throat> a big, huge, fire, emergency, alarm bells problem that happens in a lot of people's businesses is your emotions. I know that it is hard when somebody joins your team and they message you and they're like, I'm gonna blow this up. I mean, I'm gonna be your biggest rock star. I'm gonna be your biggest leg. I'm gonna be the top and roller. In my other company, I did this, 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 and this. And I'm gonna do all, right, all this kind of stuff. And you're like, ah, I made a jackpot, right? You're thinking all the things, okay? And then they do nothing. Or maybe they do a little itty bit, and then they disappear off the face of the planet. <laughs> or you have a customer who they come on board, and they order, and they order for like three months, and they're loving it. And they're like, oh, I'm never gonna be without this product. I love it so much. This is the most amazing thing ever. Thank you, thank you so much. You're like an angel. I so appreciate you following up with me and for getting me on this product because I never wanna be without it. And this is the best thing ever. And I'll just share this with everybody. And oh my gosh, you're thinking, this customer is gonna be somebody for life. Like I've got a lifer. And then they stop ordering. And they won't answer your messages. Now, you probably, if you're a human, <laughs> You probably have felt when that happens, like, dang it. Oh, you probably felt one of two ways is the most common. The most common thing is I'm pissed at that person for doing that. They promised me this. They told me that. I thought they would do X, Y, Z. Oh, they said they would go there. They said they would keep buying. She said she was gonna be on that call. He said he was gonna do that meeting all this stuff, right? And you're like, hey, I hate that person. Ooh, they let me down and I'm so disappointed and oh, I just feel some type of way, right? Then you get all up in your feelings in a negative way and it has a ripple effect. Like everything, I talk about this so much, but that energy that you're feeling all up in here, it comes out. I don't care what you're posting. I don't care what call you're on. It comes across if you're feeling some type of angst that somebody disappointed you and somebody didn't meet your expectations, it will come across in such a way that people can feel it. You ever heard the phrase, um, your vibe attracts your tribe? I know that sounds super woo woo and weird, but it's the truth. People can absolutely feel what you're feeling. They can. They can tell if you're in it for the money. They can tell if you're doing it to hit a bonus, you need a favor. They can totally tell that kind of stuff. Thank you for sharing. Um, so my challenge to you is don't let your emotions get the best of you. You are always the thermostat. You have got to always keep like an even keel, a level head, even when someone disappears. I'm gonna tell you why they disappear in just a second. Or two, the second thing is that you might feel like it's your fault. Like it's all about you. You're so vain. I bet you think this video is about you. You're so vain. I bet you think that you did something to make them quit. 
I bet you think you did something to make them stop taking that product or to disconnect that service or to unsubscribe or to stop watching the video. You're so vain. I bet you think that it's about you. Newsflash, it's usually not about you. If you're consistent and you're confident and you're showing up and you're doing the work and you're a product of your product and you're like the train is moving with or without you and I'm excited with or without you and I'm happy with or without you, I'd love to have you on board, but it's not gonna make or break my entire life. If you're doing all those things and all those things are in place and someone still quits, resigns, stops ordering, unsubscribes, whatever, it's usually not about you. Here's the thing. In life, like look at your own life. You probably have had a life-changing situation in the last 90 days, six months. You've probably had something that's changed in your life. Financially, physically, good or bad, good or bad, whatever. Like life situation, home situation, relationship situation, financial situation, something has probably changed for you in the last three to six months, right? You have probably unsubscribed or canceled orders or stopped purchasing anything, big or small, at some point in the last three to six months because of just something else going on in here. Maybe you found something you like better, sure. Maybe the person who sold it to you, you found out is not of integrity. Maybe you felt like you were just treated like a number or like somebody to hit a rank or somebody to hit a sales bonus or whatever. You could have felt like that. But a majority of people who stop ordering, who stop doing whatever they said they were gonna do, most people do that and it has nothing to do with you, nothing. But without you realizing this, you can really screw it up any chance of them coming back with you when they're ready, you can really massively screw it up. And that's what I'm on here to teach you how to prevent from doing, okay? So like, if number one, if you've got all these things in place where you're consistent and you're showing up and you're confident and you're doing all these things, when someone leaves, and I'm saying when, not if, because in your business, if you are in sales, if you are an entrepreneur, network marketing, direct sales, you will have people who quit. You will, you'll have customers who stop ordering, you'll have subscribers that unsubscribe, you will have team members that drop out, you will have leaders walk away, you will. And probably none of it has anything to do with you. But when you take action and you start feeling some type of way, and you start uh, being aggressive, like, I'm just gonna write them off. I'm not even gonna message them anymore. Oh, <laughs> she invited me to her kid's birthday party? No, I'm not going to that. I'm not showing up. I'm not liking her posts. I'm not watching her videos. I'm not sharing her stuff. No way, no how, nanny, nanny, boo boo, like we're in third grade, right? That is how some people act when you stop ordering their thing. They like, you're dead to me, like, like on Shark Tank. <laughs> you're dead to me, no more. That's a huge mistake. And I'll tell you why. I've had a lot, I'm like your grandma in network marketing. I've been literally in this industry on the corporate side or on the field side for almost 20 years. I've been around the block, you guys. What I'm telling you right now, as far as customer care, you have to provide excellent white glove VIP customer service before they pay, while they pay, and even when they stop paying, even when they're not a customer or a client anymore, you wanna know why? Because every three to six months, something changes in someone's life. People don't, they're not gonna outwardly tell you what their problems are, most likely. They're not gonna tell you, hey, I stopped ordering because I just can't afford it anymore. Hey, um, I stopped doing the business because I'm having personal problems with my spouse. They're not gonna like, usually they're not gonna up and just tell you all of their life's problems they're gonna give you an excuse or they're gonna ghost you they're either gonna not answer your messages not answer your calls or just be very vague um, right or they're gonna give you some kind of lame not the truth excuse of 
I've, I've literally never in my life, like as far as like not affording something, as far like, I've never in my life had so many people who say their credit card got stolen and they're waiting on a new one, like their identity got stolen. Like really? Like, so, but that's a very common thing to use as a reason. Like sometimes that's true, but sometimes that's what people say to avoid saying, hey, I mismanaged my finances and I don't have the extra disposable income to spend on the product that I want right now. That's a mature way of saying no, but some people are like, oh, my identity got stolen. And they make up this whole, they make up this whole story. I'm serious. It's happened so many times. Like, wow, that's a coincidence. Like <laughs> a lot of people that I know have had that happen. Now, I mean, obviously that, of course that's a thing, but that happens. But the way you treat people, you have a decision. Like it's, it's like a fork in the road. You have a, you have a decision to make when that happens to you, when that, when you're faced with that situation, you can treat people like crap and blow them off and ignore them and like write them off. Okay. Like, uh, your expectations were up here, their activity, their decision-making was down here. And because your expectation was too high and they didn't meet your unrealistic expectations, you might write them off and you might start treating them like crap. And then something happens. Their life changes in three to six months and now they're ready. Now they're ready to come back. They're, they're ready to come back into the fold. They wanna get back on the product. They wanna restart your service or whatever. And then they have a decision to make. Do they wanna do that with you? Or will they wanna do that with someone who provides a service similar to you and go with them instead because of the way you treated them? Good or bad, the way you treated them on their way out is just as important as how you woo them and how you court them on their way in, right? I think a lot of companies and a lot of gurus out there teach people how to get new customers and how to be better at recruiting and how to close a sale and all this kind of stuff. Not very many people teach you what I'm teaching you right now of how to provide VIP customer service even when they stop doing business with you. Y'all, in my experience, my personal my personal business, like right now, I have had so many, y'all would freak out, so many people who due to life changes, circumstances or whatever, they quit, they fall off, they stop ordering, they quit their business, whatever. And they're dormant for literally sometimes years. But because I still show up, and I'm still a friend and I'm still engaging and I still treat them the same way I treated them when they were in the thick of it, when their situation changes and they're ready to come back, do you know what happens? They come back with me. They come back knowing the door never closed. The lights never turned off. I'm, they can show up on my Facebook and I'm still bold, I'm still confident, I'm still excited, I'm consistent, like consistent is my middle name, like for real. Um, and I'm doing the actual thing that I'm teaching to do. And so immediately when they're considering coming back, they're probably going to stalk your Facebook page to see, are you still doing that thing that you were excited about? Or did you just do it for a short term to make money? They're going to stalk your page. And when they go to your page, what are they going to see? Like, take a look at your Facebook. When you're done with this video, take a look at your own Facebook. If you promote a product or a service, you have to be somewhere in between super confident and bold about your business and excited about it and promoting it in a non-spammy, non, don't post graphics and all that kind of weird stuff, but in a non-spammy weird way. But there's a balance between also showing who you are and what you're about. You've got to find that middle ground, okay? I train a lot on this, um, but you have to, like, when you look at your own Facebook, would you do business with you? That's a really, that's an interesting question to ask yourself, right? Are you showing up where you're excited about your product, but, but like doing it in a way that they would feel like, oh my gosh, that sounds really fun to promote. Or are you doing stuff that's like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be that person. <laughs> uh, if that's what it takes to be at their level of success, like, nope, I'm out. If all they do is post about their product and buy this thing and buy one, get one and 20% off and oh, I'm help me out because I'm hitting a bonus. Like y'all, no one wants, would you go to a restaurant if the chef was standing outside with one of those spinning signs things and said, help me out. I just need more customers to eat my food. Like, no, <laughs> you would not go into that restaurant. No way. If that restaurant, if that restaurant owner, if that chef was like so desperate for business, 
that they're having to basically spam, which in real brick and mortar terms is those like spinning signs and people dressed up like a clown and like, right? That's the actual real life version of spam. It's like the same thing as posting promo poster this and buy this thing and join my team and all this vomit. Like you wouldn't want to do business with that. So you have to show up in a way that's classy, but that also is like leading by example. Would you do business with you? If you go to your own page, do you look like a spam bot? Like, does it look like your page got hacked because all you're doing is sharing other people's stuff or you're sharing posters or graphics? Nothing's you, nothing's your face, where you live, who you are, what you care about. I'm not talking about politics and stuff. I'm saying like making your own actual post. Is it showing people that or is all of it just like robot, yucky, shared other people's content? It's nothing that you actually physically typed. People can't see who you are. Because if they don't see who you are, how are they gonna trust you? And if they don't trust you, why would they do business with you? They won't. So go in there and audit your page and look and see, am I like too Spamala Pamela? Or does it look like I don't even promote this business or this product anymore? Like some people are so afraid of being spammy, they don't do anything. So like, when's the last time you posted a personal testimony like of yourself, your personal picture, your personal experience with your product? Instead of just trying to recruit and sell, when's the last time you just shared? If it's been a while, like I would challenge you, go put your own face, it's Facebook. People want to see your face, not somebody else's, post your picture about your product, make it about what you're personally experiencing without saying the name of the company, without being spammy weird, right? But just share your experience. I challenge you to do that because if you're not posting enough about your products or you're posting it in the wrong way that's spammy or weird, you're gonna turn people off. So here's what I wanna say to you is like when people quit, not if, you have to love them on the way in, you have to love them on the way out, okay? The challenge that I gave to my team um, today is like right now, if you if you can think of somebody who dropped out, quit, stopped ordering, let you down, they were a promoter and they were like super gung ho and now they're quit. Maybe they joined another company, Ah, like that kind of stuff. And if you feel anger, like you have to check yourself and be honest with yourself. If you feel anger. If you feel frustration, disappointment, sadness, like if it makes you feel any kind of emotional kind of way, this is gonna sound woo woo, trust me, roll with me here. I want you to do two things. One, write in a journal who that person is, like their name, and I want you to, in the journal, I want you to say why you're grateful that they even said yes to you, even if it was only for a day, who cares, right? And I want you to write down, why does that make you so mad? Why does it make you so mad that they quit? Why does it make you emotionally upset that they made the decision that they felt was best for them? Why do you care so much? I want you to write that down. Journal about it. Nobody else is gonna see it. You're not showing it. You're not posting it if you don't want to. It's for your own personal. You need to write it down because what I've learned is that in my in my experience, like when I was first starting this type of business, boy, I would like, <laughs> I used to I used to do home parties and I would come home from part, like I was, okay, don't judge me. I was an infant in my business, okay? Like this is early, early on. I would come home from some of those parties and I wouldn't get any bookings. It was like a home party thing, right? So like the people in the group that you needed them to like book parties so that you had more business. Okay, so like we were, it was not online. It was like I had to actually physically make more bookings for parties in my calendar so that next week or the weeks beyond, I had more parties to do. (laughs) So, oh my gosh. Like when I would do those parties, OMG, my poor husband. I would come home and I was a real, later on in my business, I was super, super good. Okay, but dude, early on, I would come home crying. Like, actual real life tears, crying, bawling, that nobody booked a party. I couldn't get them to book a party. I mean, the sales were really low and no one rebooked and even the hostess didn't wanna rebook a party. What am I doing wrong? I'm so mad at those people. And then, oh, and then I started like getting, like you spin out, right? When you get into that mindset. So then I remember thinking, 
It's just that neighborhood. That whole neighborhood just sucks. That whole city. And I've heard people be like, oh, I mean, nobody in Tennessee does this type of business. Nobody in Tennessee has the money to do the, you know, to order those products. Oh, it's just Oklahoma. The whole state of Oklahoma, like they just have some kind of mentality up in Oklahoma. Y'all, there are millions, millions and millions and millions of people in the whole state. Are you really telling me that everybody in the whole state, like not one person is successful or can afford, I mean, seriously. But your mind goes crazy when this kind of stuff happens. When you get like emotionally twisted in this emotional state of somebody not meeting your expectations, our brains just like neurons start misfiring. It's the craziest thing that happens, right? So you need to write down why does that make you so mad? Why does it upset you? Why does it make you sad? Why does it even affect you emotionally that someone else didn't do something that you had zero influence or zero control over? Why does that make you so mad? Then what I want you to do, and some of y'all are gonna hate me, y'all are gonna like send me hate messages, that's fine, it's fine, whatever, okay. I want you, if you have somebody who specifically like ordered through you and then canceled their service, um, or they're not a customer of yours anymore, they're not a client of yours, they're, they moved on to a different team, like whatever your situation is, okay? If you're thinking of somebody that like every time you think of their name, it really ticks you off, like you're feeling frustrated that I'm even talking about this because you're like, I don't want to write in my journal and take up a whole page with their name on it. Ew. That person, you're going to hate me. I want you to write them a note, like an actual note with an actual pen. <laughs> and I want you to write a thank you card and express gratitude to them for saying yes to you even one time. Write a thank you note of appreciation. Thank you so much for your business. Even if it wasn't right for you and it's not right for you right now, I want you to know I greatly appreciate the chance to do business with you, that you said yes, and for you experiencing whatever, right? If they left to go to a different company, thank you so much. I am so grateful that I got to lock arms with you even for a short time. Best wishes in your new endeavor. Congratulations on your new promotion. Whatever, you guys, it's not for them. It's not for them. You're not doing it to get something out of it. You are not. This is a send it and forget it, bless and release. You are sending this off so that you personally have some closure, okay? So like it's one of those things where you are not sending this in hopes that they will reply. You're not sending it in hopes that you're gonna get a phone call or you're gonna get a message from your long lost customer or your long lost team member saying, oh, thank you so much and because I got your letter, now I wanna come back. It will not happen like that. You are sending it for your own personal spirit so that the weight that's holding you back, the weight that's holding you down and making your energy so low and making you feel like you're not good at this, you can't do this anymore, you should just give up, this isn't the right thing for you. Everybody's quitting, the sky is falling, nobody in Oklahoma does business like this, like whatever, right? You are doing this so that you can get that burden off your shoulders and move forward with or without that person with a light and confident and consistent showing up because people are watching you right now. Right now there is somebody who has visited your Facebook page, or your YouTube channel or your Instagram right now. Today, someone has gone to your page to see what you're all about. They have gone to your wall to see, are you a product of your product? Do they want to do business with you? Are you the type of person who's just gonna woo them in, but then forget about them when they order? Are you the type of person who's gonna onboard them and get them on a training call with the mentors and the leaders, and then you're gonna forget about them and you're not even gonna message them like you were back then? Are you the type of person who's only running for a bonus? Are you the type of person who's only trying to hit a rank? Are you really doing your business and promoting the product that you promote to serve them? People can tell it. People can sniff it out. I'm telling you right now. So if you're feeling some type of way about that, just know people will quit. You're going to be in business. And if you're in sales, that will mean lack of sales too. It's not all like sunshine and rainbows around here in the sales industry. It's not. People are going to tell you no. It's just part of it. If you're in this type of business and you expect everybody to say no and you get all bent out of shape when a couple people say no or quit, dude, sorry, you have to grow through that garbage and move on through it, okay?
Okay, so I hope this was helpful. If you have people who follow you on social media, please hit the share button and then comment and let me know that you did that so I can say thank you. Um, I truly believe that like we can help each other. We can all help each other when one rises uh, when the tide rises, all boats rise. And I really feel like as entrepreneurs, as network marketers, like if I learn something that's helped me or I've experienced something that's helped me, we have an obligation to share it with other people to help them too. My goal is to help shorten your learning curve because I've been through a lot. I'm still going through stuff. I still have experiences like this. I'm 20 something years into this, right? So anyway, hit the share button and let me know that you do that if you found value in that. And I appreciate that you guys um, watch my videos and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye everyone, have a good night.